Okay, here we are. This is a crease fly lesson on how I do them. Uh, I'm assuming that if you're watching this, you know the basics on how to tie a crease fly. So I'm not gonna get into that part of it. What I do want to talk about is finishing the outside of it because I found a way that I really like. It makes it easy. Now, I'm not uh, super talented at tying flies at all. Uh, I have to do functional things. So, plus I don't have a lot of patience sometimes. So, uh, what I do with these is I tie the the fly, and you can see the shape of it. Shape it up the way I want it to look, sort of a little bit fishy. And then I take this. Um, mylar tubing and I tie it to the front like that tie it on and then I just kind of peel it back just kind of peel it back so it peels back over it and then cut it to fit the shape of the fly you know once I do that then I'm going to put two coats of two-part epoxy now, let me tell you about the trick with epoxy. Uh, I'm seeing some of this right now on the fly tying pages. And I've, I've done it, I've used it for, now back when I started tying these things, guys, we didn't have a lot of these uh, uh, hardening agents that, you, that we have now. We had to use epoxy. So you had to learn how to mix it right and how to cure it right. So the trick with that is to Mix it in a small cup, just a small amount. Put it one cap of the hardener, one cap of the actuator in there. And in a small little cup or a little something, you can do it on top of a piece of foil if you want. Mix it until it's clear. When you, when you mix those two parts together, it's going to be sort of cloudy. You want to mix it, and it might take three or four minutes, just take a little toothpick in there and just zip it around until it gets clear and as clear as you can see it. And then you really need to have a spinner and that's just a little battery operated wheel that's got a, 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 rubber, a rubber wheel and you stick these flies on it and it'll just spin very slowly and you want, you want it spinning for the, these would go overnight is how I do them. So before I do that, I'll coat it. Once I have my epoxy mixed, I'll coat it. I'll coat it onto this fly. I'll put it up on that wheel and I'll let that thing go all night. Now, once you've done that and it's hardened the next morning, then do another coat, do two coats on here. And you'll see that that thing is just beautiful. It'll be shiny and nice. And that's when I paint them. You could actually paint them if you want before, but if you use if you use a uh, um, permanent marker, sometimes that epoxy will, will make it run like it did on this one. You can, if you look real close, you can see where it kind of ran a little bit. And so you want to um, maybe put that on afterwards. I mean, it doesn't really matter, I guess. It's just per personal preference. And that's it. It's, it's very simple. Some of these that I have are 10 years old. Um, I've had them a long time. They're very, very durable. So uh, the other key thing I found with tying these is getting this hook at the right angle. Some of mine are, some of them aren't. But if it's not at the right angle, sometimes it'll make that thing pull funny. <laughs> so you got to kind of test that out. So that's the trick uh, for me for tying these crease flies. I just wanted you guys to uh, have that kind of in your head when you're thinking about it. Use this mylar tubing. It saves you a whole lot of work. It's a whole lot better than any kind of uh, fingernail polish or anything like that that you can put on there. This is 10 times better. And as you can see, it just looks fantastic on that fly. So good luck with it. And check me out at uh, Flyfish Fork on YouTube. Become a member. I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe, I mean. And uh, check out Flyfish Fork on Facebook. And uh, check out my weekly fishing report at the Texas Parks and Wildlife uh, fishing page. Uh, I'm out weekly now. Have a good day.